Hello, welcome to another episode, episode 107, they say, of the Boink Radio Podcast here on the Boink Network Discord server. And who is they, Delta? I don't know. Who is they? <laughs> oh, I forgot to do my audio, so you've got so many echoes in my ears. They are the people who joined the uh, the Boink Workshop on what that there, the March 1st, that Wednesday at noon, the virtual workshop that lasted for how many hours, they say, Delta? I don't know, because I woke up at 3 a.m. to attend it. <laughs> <laughs> Your passion and enthusiasm and dedication, that's the word I'm looking for, is amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And my internet worked this time. That's wonderful. Did you present? Yes, I presented on day one. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was there on day one. So uh, in this episode, we're going to talk about everything that happened on day one. That's so exciting. The Boink Workshop, day two, happened on March 8th, which both of us may or may not have remembered to go to. One I, of us may I, or may not I have don't want to wake up at 3 a.m. again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's remind the good folks that you can join us on the Boink network discord server every friday every other friday at 5 p.m eastern where we talk about all things boink and we haven't said this in a long time but we are more than happy to let you talk instead of us but it just turns out that uh most people don't like talking they'd rather just listen to us talk <laughs> uh you can also catch us on the sei twitter nope the sei youtube channel and the boink network twitter um and wherever you get your funny beverages. Yeah, it's That's beverage segue. time. Segway, <laughs> take it, take it. <laughs> um, okay, so we have another oak and it knows to censor the image. There, oak. <laughs> All right, I'm drinking oak caramel white chocolate. And uh, I believe this one actually tastes quite similar to one that I've had before. Uh, another one which used caramel. Um, I'll give you a bit of the blurb as as per tradition with oak. You think white chocolate is a bit soft? Wait until it's been caramelized from the inside out and watch Hungry Thirsty begin to tremble in its boots. Hungry Thirsty isn't smart enough to run, so the sweet union between oak and Woolworths is going to drown it in a wave of liquid golden goodness until its body washes up on the shore, rest in pieces. That was savage. <laughs> I don't like any, I feel very uncomfortable. Okay, but the interesting thing is that this is actually a um, collaboration between Oak and Woolworths, which is actually quite surprising. Um, so um, yeah, in, in terms of how it tastes, um, it's it's got a very, very like deep caramel taste. Um, I don't know if I can taste the white chocolate. It's just sugar. Can you tell I'm disgusted? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, this one's not too bad. Um, it's better than Jambol Donut. Definitely better than that. Um, probably not as good as uh, mint chocolate, the one that I had the other day, uh, the other week, rather. Um, so yeah, that's probably how I'd rate it. Um, and yeah, then <laughs> now I got to find some more drinks. So I think that I think I've gone through all the oaks. Um, I don't think there's any other new oak flavors in in Woolies anymore, or at least my local one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if anyone's listening on Discord or uh, and and just hears me giggling, it's because I just found a picture of my dog that I forgot and I put it on screen. <laughs> Freaking hilarious. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm glad you got to taste all the oak beverages here on the Boink Radio Discord, where I think we can now just call it the Oak Podcast. The Oak Oak Time. Oak Cast. <laughs> oak in the Oak. All right. Okay, well, let's... let's move on. <laughs> okay, he did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to some news here. Um, we've got coming out of Wanless, 
just a big number done a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think Wanless is just the project of big numbers. Like the more hits that we can get on a particular factor, the better, I guess, because uh, we're all excited when the big numbers get bigger. Um, yeah. All right. So moving <laughs> on to, and I apologize to Wanless and those who like big numbers, but frankly, more interesting news. Uh, Einstein, Einstein at home put out a very nice uh, post here updating us all on what they all doing over there. Uh, they have, according to this post, already found 55 radio pulsars, 39 gamma ray pulsars. That's all with our computers. So how cool is that? This is, uh, they say they've analyzed all the Arecibo data over the course of the past 15 years uh, with more than 150,000 individual observations having been processed. Uh, that's really cool. They are now in the process of post-processing those results. hey -o. Coming from the Green Bank Telescope, they are searching data collected in 2009, two, sorry, 2017, and they expect that initial analysis will be completed within the next two months. So this is, I think, what you are currently doing with your computers if you're contributing to Einstein at home. And then there is a new telescope called Meerkat that's spelled M-E-E-R-K-A-T. It's a new radio telescope uh, in South Africa that can search the southern sky with more sensitivity and higher resolution than ever before. That means they're going to be getting a whole bunch more uh, data coming in. Uh, the GPU accelerated BRP7 application, I imagine, is processing data from the TRAPUM survey. Gosh, I love these acronyms. <laughs> I don't know what TRAPUM stands for, but it's in all caps, so I bet it stands for something great. Um, and they are almost finished hunting for quote unquote black widow binaries in the globular clusters Messier. 22, Messier 28, and Terzan 5. Also, space names are freaking fantastic. <laughs> and these are just like the last names of people who, quote unquote, discovered these things, right? Probably, probably. But God, so fun. All right. Uh, so these clusters and these binaries, sorry, are dense spherical conglomerations of stars that harbor many rapidly rotating pulsars. Sorry, those are the clusters, are those conglomerations. Uh, especially in binary systems. So after that's done, they'll search the data again, this time uh, looking for double neutron star binaries. So really looking for the freaking binaries out there. Uh, oh, this is exciting. Our friends at Zooniverse will be post-processing the Arecibo data uh, because Einstein at Home has identified more than 50 billion candidates of, I imagine, pulsars. Um, and they have accept, they've selected a few hundred thousand, which are most likely to be new pulsars. They say it right there. I should have read on, oh man, you know, those tests in high school where it's like, read all the questions before you take the test. And then the last question is like, congratulations. Don't do any of the questions for every question you do. You lose a point. <laughs> should have done more I of those. Can't say I've done that one. <laughs> Oh, man, those were great tests. Easiest way to get, like, extra 10 points. Anyway, uh, so this few hundred thousand... Oh, this also brings up another topic. These few hundred thousand candidates, Pulsar candidates, it, it's not enough to um, examine through their Boink projects. It just doesn't... I, I imagine it doesn't uh, justify putting it through the, the app. So they're setting up a Zooniverse project. So people will look at those hundred, few hundred thousand candidates and determine whether or not uh, they're pulsars. That's really cool. And this brings up, uh, I'll, I'll finish the news first, then I'll go back to microgrid. Uh, so it, it goes on to say that Einstein's uh, at home's computing power is used to search data from the Large Area Telescope uh, on NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope. FGRP5, which is an application, targets dozens of point sources, which appear to be isolated neutron stars, but where no pulsations have so far been identified. The FGRP5 
PB1G, and it seems they've run out of imagination here, uh, sir, <laughs> uh, hunts for gamma ray pulsars in binary systems. Um, they're working with astronomers to find the most promising targets. And a 2021 press release about an early discovery provides some backgrounds on how all this works. Uh, that last part has a lot of links to it. So I recommend going to Einstein at Home's website, einsteinathome.org. The at is A-T there. So einsteinathome.org and read more. Click all the links, learn a bunch of stuff about science, read some cool names, and then get to thinking, hey, what if there was a, a Boink project that helped computations, uh, computational research researchers, let's say, that, that had data to analyze, but it's not quite enough data that would justify the time it takes and the effort it takes to set up its own Boink project? Wouldn't that be cool? What say you, Delta? Yeah, um, and yeah, what's even cooler is building the applications for them so that they can go and do things like uh, figuring out the most optimal configuration of gutters uh, that you can put on a home. <laughs> really pushing for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if this sounds interesting to you, join us at the Science Commons Initiative with the microgrid working group where we were trying to put this together. We specifically need people who can help build these applications. The Delta is uh, taking charge here and, and trying to, to build this up. Uh, but we got a bunch of people who want this to happen. Uh, we got a little money over there at the SDI we want to put behind this project. And even if you can't uh, code at all, get in there, help us out anyway. Once we do uh, get some engineering going, then we will definitely need your help. Uh, and one of the things we could do with microgrid, possibly, is be like, hey, look, just give us the 100,000 um, candidates for pulsars, and we'll analyze them like 700 times through microgrid. It will cost you nothing, and you don't even need to set up a Boink project. Like, use your Boink project to do the other more novel stuff, and we'll, we'll do this sort of post-processing through Boink. Not to take anything away from Zooniverse, because Zooniverse is awesome. Yeah, Zooniverse is really cool. And uh, I'm really glad to see that Einstein at Home is uh, is using it too. So if you want to support Einstein at Home, not only with your computer, but with your brain, go to Zooniverse. <laughs> right on. Right on. And other news, uh, Prime Grid hosted a Women's Day Challenge, International Women's Day Challenge on March 8th. That I think is already over because it was a one-day challenge. But good looks to them. That's an awesome initiative. Awesome challenge i'm sure they found some really cool primes or, or didn't i don't know at this time i just feel like they found all the primes and can go home but i guess not we'll never find all the primes that's my <laughs> bet <laughs> okay um in other news i'm just running through this if you want to take one from me feel free Feel free to I think the, the last one is just the fact that the uh, M Queens 27 project is finished with Yo-Yo at home. Um, yeah, that's what the was that the M Queens. It's a puzzle uh, where you have to place uh, M chess queens on a M by M chess board so that no two queens threaten each other. Um, Interesting. And they've solved it for a board of size 27, which is pretty cool um and uh because i used to do yo-yo at home a lot uh mainly because of the optimal golem ruler problem uh so currently all that yo-yo at home is doing it now is just the ecm uh project to, for elliptic curve cryptography and uh a sieving uh, i think a prime sieving uh application so yeah i want yo-yo at home to continue some of the some of the ones especially the golem ruler Well, convince them or build it from <laughs> microgrid. You got this. Hell yeah. All right, um, well, that's okay. it for the news. Yeah, um, I'll get straight on to the Boink Workshop summary from day one. So uh, for those of you that didn't attend day one, uh, day one uh, was kind of like a quick rapid fire. Here's what's happening. Here's what's going on. Here's some updates. This is what the community is doing. 
Um, and yeah, it has some really cool stuff in it uh, in terms of a in terms of a summary. Uh, so starting off with uh, David Anderson, who gave a, a pretty decent summary of the Boink ecosystem as a whole. Um, he did take a little bit of a pessimistic approach, saying that uh, there uh, there are users who are slowly dropping off um, in the Boink community over time. And there's nothing much that's uh, actually bringing them back uh, or actually bringing on new people in general. And uh, then uh, there was a lot of talk about Science United, uh, which is the kind of like Boink, I think it's the Boink manager that basically you just select which kind of fields of science you want to like contribute with the computer and then it'll just do its thing and install all the projects you need. Um, so that is great for the user end of it. So people coming in who just want to contribute their computing power, but uh, we're yet to actually get something a lot more simple for the scientist end. Uh, and that's where David Anderson presented uh, an idea that people are working on uh, called Boink Central, uh, which is basically a project that takes common big computing, like high performance computing apps like uh, Autodoc, for example, puts them on a Boink service and then allows uh, scientists to come in and say, oh, I need to know the uh, docking characteristics for these proteins or uh, for these molecules on these proteins. And that's pretty much all they have to do. And then the results will get crunched by the Boink project and then come back to the scientist, which makes it so much easier for the scientist um, and yeah, like that's the that's Boink Central. That's essentially how it works. Uh, and they're also getting it uh, to integrate with certain um, other software as well. Like, uh, for example, uh, with the Burp project, what you would do is you'd link it up with Blender, which is software on your computer, and then it would run via the Burp project on the Boink network. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like that sort of process they're trying to implement. Uh, and yeah, I'm keen to see uh, how Boink Central pans out and see uh, if it works pretty well. And it sounds like it's a pretty decent idea, especially for a lot of the common computing apps that scientists use um, around the world quite regularly. Uh, there was also a little bit of a news article. Uh, <laughs> uh, David Anson apparently um, engaged with some people from, I think, Suzuki, if I'm not mistaken and managed to get Boink, or at least a specifically compiled version of Boink running on about 10 Suzuki cars as a proof of concept. Um, uh, as he said during the uh, workshop, it didn't really go much further than that, but uh, it goes to show that Boink can run on some embedded systems. Uh, and another good example that he brought up was there was a company that made a special build of Boink for um, the uh, their network infrastructure, so like their routers and switches, uh, and basically just had them had them running some Boink tasks. So um, the initiative to get Boink onto more kind of like embedded systems that we don't usually like check, like routers and stuff like that, and also systems that remain regularly idle, like cars, um, is still going. But um, oh, and also water heaters. There's water heaters that also run Boink as well. Um, but this initiative kind of isn't gaining that much traction. Um, and it'd be interesting to discuss what's actually causing that lack of traction. Because we do have a proof of concepts. We have Boink running on 10 cars. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, I'm interested to see where this goes, uh, especially next year. Hopefully, uh, maybe someone can take this up and uh, run with it. Uh, that was all for David Anderson's summary. Uh, then came up, uh, I think it was my, I can't remember if I came second. Um, all I know is that I was there, so go and watch my video. I was doing uh, the great summary on the Boink census. We've already had a couple episodes on the Boink radio for this, so if you want to check them out, um, you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, my internet worked this time. <laughs> so I am so glad that I was not a one frame per second slideshow um, in the Zoom call this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, then after me, I think it was Well Commuted Grid. 
and uh, yeah, they had a pretty big update. So um, World Community Grid is still running. They're still doing things. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, their work unit creation and task delivery is stable on, on the Boink network now. Um, they wanted to share a couple things that they learned to make starting a Boink project easier. Uh, there are a lot of technical things in there. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that does make uh, starting a Boink project easier is just like a lot of the technical stuff. Um, they said that they talked about their transition away from IBM. So for those that don't know, World Community Grid went from uh, being hosted on IBM to being, um, I think they're a part of or they're funded by the Kremble Institute now, I think. Um, and they were looking at some of their statistics of uh, runtime. Uh, because they keep track of how uh, how many hours computers run well community grid and how much, how long their apps run for and they said that they lost about 50 percent of their average runtime and it's important to note that this figure is not because people just kind of left the project after world community grid left uh, ibm and transitioned to Kremble. it's partly also because they didn't have enough work units to send out and satisfy the demand for work units. So um, it's important to note that a World Community Grid still maintains the majority of its user base. Um, and yeah, once they get back up and running and work out all the kinks, then uh, they should be back to their best and uh, what they do, what they do well. Um, and yeah, they talked a lot about the infrastructure that they actually use to uh, develop the project. So if you're really interested in the architecture of that, uh, in what goes into making a massive Boink project, uh, yeah, definitely go and check out their video. Okay, uh, here's an interesting one, the Science Cloud. Uh, I believe they also appeared on uh, the Boink workshop last year as well. And uh, for those who don't know, the Science Cloud is like a little charity project where you pay to rent out some like uh, some computers to crunch Boink. Uh, so it's like um, people have done in the past just rented out a uh, virtual private server or something to run Boink. And uh, yeah, they just do it for the fun of it and the hell of it. Uh, but the Science Cloud is a charity project that's dedicated to doing exactly that. So you can pay them to rent out computers to run Boink. And they were so popular that they exhausted the cloud infrastructure on DigitalOcean. Uh, the digital, digital Ocean, the cloud service provider for these virtual private servers to rent out these computers, said, please stop. We don't have any more computers for you <laughs> to rent out. Um, so yeah, if you want to check out the science cloud, I'd highly recommend at least giving it a read to see just how it works and, um, see what they do. But yeah, uh, if you want to check out their video, they have some insane statistics on there. Uh, and finally, uh, or actually not finally, uh, there was, um, a, uh, clip on the charity engine. Uh, but as far as I saw, it was practically kind of like just the same as, as the last workshop. Um, so if you're interested in seeing uh, an update from Charity Engine, what they're doing and how they're going, um, yeah, go and check out their video. But as far as I have viewed, there wasn't anything like particularly uh, spectacular that uh, really came out of it. Uh, it's just kind of just a general update by the sounds of it. But the more exciting one was Black Holes at Home. So we actually got a, a video for uh, a um, presentation from the, uh, the founder of Black Holes at Home and uh, the researcher who's doing uh, NERPI, which is the uh, library to actually do the computations. And uh, he presented a really, 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 uh, not only exciting, but also highly interesting uh, presentation on how they've started up the project, what they can, uh, what, what they've done to start it up, how they plan on executing it. Um, and also in there to actually get some feedback on, on doing things. Uh, so just to recap for those that don't know black holes at home, they're aiming to reduce the computational complexity of simulating black hole events, like uh, two black holes colliding. And they managed to improve the speed and data storage efficiency by about 100 times. So previously, uh, it would take probably weeks to crunch these sorts of calculations. 
and it would like consume like probably like uh, a terabyte or so, I think maybe of, of data storage. The, they have exact figures on the video, but with the new um, software that's being created, um, and by the way, the previous software was, I think, like, I think they said like 10 or 15 years old. Uh, so by using this new algorithm with this new software, they're able to reduce the computational complexity massively and the storage efficiency became so much more efficient as well. I think um, output files will be a maximum of eight gigabytes, um, which is like a hell of a lot better than what they were doing before. Now, uh, a lot of you might be like really eager to know when black holes at home will be released and when you can actually crunch black holes at home. Uh, they are currently doing some checks before they actually release and open up the Boink project. They just want to check that their library and all their software is doing exactly what it needs to do and uh, ensuring that it's all correct and doing the right computations uh, before they release into the Boink project. So we're close. They're coming soon. It's going to be here um, and you better get your computers ready because it's a pretty beefy project. You're going to need a lot of resources for this. So uh, not only will this be running on the CPU, you will probably need to be transferring about two gigabytes of data from your machine to uh, the Boink uh, server every single day. Tasks are expected to probably take about a day or so or a couple days to complete. and uh, with those tasks, they're not complete black hole events like mergers or um, or collisions. It's actually just a slice of it, and they're checkpointing all of them so that uh, it can actually work in a distributed computing system. So, um, yeah, and you will need a bit of uh, storage for this as well. Uh, I think probably about, I think four gigabytes of storage. I think uh, if I remember correctly, I don't have the actual note here. Uh, but yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of resources that your computer will need to contribute in order to actually run black holes at home. And another exciting thing is that we're getting another graphics app. Uh, the, the researcher at black holes at home said that they're going to be hiring a, um, I think a graduate or uh, undergrad and uh, they are going to be designing a graphics app so that you can click on show graphics in your point manager and see what your computer is actually simulating. So props to them for that, because that is something that I personally think every project should do. Um, along with their project, their aim is to be the first ever um, software or project or, um, yeah, uh, or scientific paper to be able to crunch black hole simulations on a GPU. They do say they're planning on adding GPU support in the future. Currently it's on it's CPU only. And uh, yeah, like they, they want to be the first ever uh, project or software to run black hole simulations on the CPU because uh, the amount of efficiency, uh, sorry, not efficiency, the amount of parallelism that you get on a GPU can really be taken advantage of in this particular um, uh, in this particular application. So, uh, GPU apps will definitely speed this these particular calculations up much more than um, what the CPU can currently do. And that is the summary of the Boint Workshop Day One. If you want to go and see the Boint Workshop videos, I don't think they're uploaded yet. Um, they will be on the Boink Workshop YouTube channel. So um, if you want to go and see the previous Boink Workshop and see where I was running at a slideshow one frame per second with my crappy internet, go right ahead. I'm totally embarrassed by that video. Uh, but yeah, I highly recommend subscribing to the Boink Workshop YouTube to get a notification on when they release the uh, workshop for 2023. What do you think, Jeringa? That's a lot. It's a big update. <laughs> what was the general uh, vibe of the, of the workshop uh, post David's pessimism? I think it was pretty good. Like, um, I, I think uh, it started off on, an, on a bit of a shaky note, uh, considering that we had to present some kind of um, 
not so great figures about the user base. But towards the end of it, when we got to black holes at home, like, man, that just lifted everyone's spirits, I think. And you know, the, the whole thing was kind of pretty quick as well. Yeah, it's amazing what a passionate person can do to enliven a room of people who are passionate about the same thing. So it's very exciting <laughs> to see that black holes at home, which has been a project under development for like 80 years at this point. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see they're finally getting to where they got to go because it's it's they do seem super passionate uh and it's just super excited about what they're doing yeah definitely uh, i know that i'll be uh trying out some crunching on that project uh because i am i am quite interested in black holes especially kind of the astronomy stuff uh einstein at home has has been my all-time favorite project for a while now um i wish dhep could come back though yeah <laughs> Uh, so we should good. reach out to them. We should reach out to them, actually. Put it on the GitHub. Reach out to DHEP and tell them we'll rebuild their project for them. Yeah, because uh, the that. main reason Jim, why they... Do. Can you go put that on the GitHub? I'm <laughs> doing it now. <laughs> you are? Okay, great. Because uh, the main reason uh, that they uh, closed down their Boink project is purely because they didn't have enough funding, so... Well, let's fucking fund them. We got some money. We could probably keep them going for a year. Uh, a or even project. we just host we, we just host their project for them because uh, a lot of the costs yeah, would probably I mean. be in the um, hosting costs. Yeah. So if you want to get involved with this sort of energy where it's just like, hey, there's a problem. Let's solve it. Get in here. Come here. Give me a hug. Let's go build something together. <laughs> so... That said, the rest of it does sound really interesting, too. I know I heard a lot about the second day uh, that also sounded super interesting. So I am looking forward to seeing these videos uploaded so we can watch the um, – there's something called pedals that people are talking about, like doing some sort of machine learning. It was really cool. Um, the community above all else in Boink is always just awesome. The initiatives behind it uh not so much the businesses uh some of the prospects from the people who are, might be jaded at this point <laughs> less exciting but you get to the community like the, the boink projects themselves uh and what some imaginative people are doing with this tech is really really cool ne it never ceases to amaze even world community grid uh, i've heard a lot of people talking about the experience um that they shared with the community of just a giant old project moving a lot of stuff and struggling and and overcoming the struggles and getting to where they are now like that is that is awesome to hear about um yeah blank user base maybe it's declining it is definitely declining but there is so much energy in the distributed computing space these days uh that it just like shut up that's my response. <laughs> Just shut up. It'll be fine. Yeah, and we're, we're trying to um, get the community live again and uh, liven it up, make it more inviting, and try and get some more people on board. Because I know that uh, when I discovered Boink uh, when I was, like, I think 13 or 14. Are you um, currently, like, 15? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've been around in the community for about seven years, I think, now. Um, and yeah, it's been just a really fun ride and it's taught me a whole lot of stuff and inspired me to do a whole lot of programming too. So, um, I want other people to have the same experience that I did. Uh, and that's, that's, that's why we want to, um, make, we want to get the community bigger and we want to grow the community. Yep. 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 I want to do science. Yeah, people connected to science. I want my name on a pulsar. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> like on the pulsar, etched in there. It's like that's nah, that's a tall just on the dude. just on the map. I, I want to in oh, the future okay. in in eighty years in the future when we have uh, when we have inter interstellar travel on the star map when we go and see which pulsars we use to direct ourselves in interstellar travel i want my name on one of them that's why i'm going to be crunching I, einstein at home all through winter this year someone will be reading the list of the stars and be like huh these are really funny names they're fun to say they're probably just last names of people who discovered them right 
That'll be your name. Uh, all right, I think you should wrap it up now. Yeah. Um, folks, should last thought here, should write about, if you attended the Boink Workshop, write about it. Start a shitty blog. Who cares if it's a shitty <laughs> Make blog? Make a Twitter post. <laughs> Put someone um, from the SCI on the board. I forget who it was. I think it was Goblin. Made a comment the other day. Um, I'm sure he's okay with me sharing this because it's just freaking mind blowing. With the the AIs these days, Chat GPT three, etc. You can, with a lot of languages out there, just say, "Hey, code a program that does this in that way." And for the most part, Chat GPT will write some software that will do it. It's not perfect. It's not like ideal, but there's no errors. It functions. It does that because there's so much writing on that language, on that application, on that uh, software, whatever they're, they're asking ChatGPT. There's so much of it on the internet that ChatGPT understands it for the most part. With Boink, go ahead, go to ChatGPT and ask it to do something with Boink. There's not any writing out there. The documentation is insanely outdated. Like, it, just just get get Boink out there in the ethos. An idea, a thought. Hey, I really liked this. I didn't like that. It adds to the AI that will soon run our lives. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my ass to you, dear sirs. <laughs> so, get out there. Any final thoughts on From Your End, Delta? No, that's good. Um, hopefully in two weeks we'll have the videos from the point workshop uh, and then we'll give you a rundown of uh, day two of point workshop 2023. Right on. Have a great weekend, everyone. Two weeks. We'll see you back here. See ya.